Welcome to the Palette Talks podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Palette Talks podcast. This is your host, Jason, and today we are joined by a very special guest, none other than Chris Carl. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great as well. So um, for the people out there who is listening to this podcast and they have not known who you are, can you introduce yourself, um, who you are and what do you do? All right. So um, my name is uh, Chris Carl, a uh, real name Crispin. I'm, I live in Sweden, uh, Stockholm. I produce mostly lo-fi beats, but all, as well as chop chopping some, you know, chopping samples up and making some sounds out of it with my, uh, as well with my friend, he, he's not here today. So yeah. That is awesome. And so you're based in Stockholm, Sweden. Is that right? Yes. Correct. Oh yeah. So you, um, what have you been doing lately? Like, what are you up to these days? Um, I have a bit of schoolwork, but I'm, I mainly focus on the music right now. I'm, I'm making some, I'm actually working on a tape right now, um, and I'm, uh, con- I'm releasing like, um, uh, you know, some some small projects. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then like, wait, wait for the bigger ones. Um, well, so I, I mostly make you know like, just music. Uh, hang out with friends. You know, like a normal teenager. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. So um, I I take a look at your Spotify and I saw your latest EP called mm-hmm. Flow Five. Yes, so exactly. can you tell us a little bit about how the process of uh, you making the EP? Okay, so the process of Flow Funk is basically, uh, I've always stuck with beats and like down tempo, um, and I wanted to do something new, yeah. like. For for me, uh, I want to become like a better p- producer. So I, yeah, and my um, uh, abilities. So I tried something new, like uh, a bit of funky type beat thing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I I had my friend. He he plays guitar. Um, so we recorded uh, some guitar sounds as well as uh, uh, getting some samples. Um. And we put it together, and we had like these uh, uh, three songs called um, "Oceans," "Narcos," and "Sunshine Time," which is like mainly funk, but also soulful beats, I would say. And then I created the Carlos one, which was like based off only samples and uh, like a, a type of bump beat. So it, that that one stuck out from the rest of the songs, but. The thing with flow funk is that I wanted to make it as it, it, summer is tuning in here in Sweden. It's you oh, know yeah. Sweden is cold, <laughs> so yeah. I want people to relate the flow funk EP to like uh, Sweden tuning into summer. Summer begins. It's getting warmer. People are hanging out like uh, outside more. You know, like I I, I want I want a flow funk to be like um really soulful summary funky ep so yeah that's that's the process behind it yeah that's really cool uh like the fact that um you're you're in sweden right and you created this ep and um how it really relates to the condition in sweden yeah. and and how you want to like express that through your ep and i think that's really cool uh, yeah, so and you, to do it like in a funk um, vibe, uh, mm-hmm. something different, uh, I think that that would be fun, right? For a producer to create something that they have never created before, something like new, different. Like, I think that's that's awesome. So um, well, maybe like, why do you call it flow funk? Like, do you have any like behind um, meaning? Uh, not, not much. I, I, I wanted to... Uh have funk in the uh, uh, EP title since, you know, it's a 
it's a pre- pretty funky album but yeah. flow flow i just because like the process behind it when we were sitting in my um me and my friend's studio when we were making it it was like uh we just went the, with the flow we didn't structure yeah. like the the ep we just mm. like played some loops and you know we, we we just went we just created music with flow so you know flow funk <laughs> you mm-hmm. guess, so that's uh, yeah the history behind the name so i mean it fits really well you know flow funk yeah, yeah. Um, if you don't mind can you like tell us tell me like um how long does it take for you to produce like a track or like flow funk it depends really it really depends sometimes i can be lazy and just like cook up a beat and just throw it out as a single in like maybe three or four hours but sometimes like it can take if i want it to be really good sound sound like the, the best um it can take up to hmm, one month for an, for an ep with four tracks cool. uh, w- one month but flow funk took approximately three weeks i think oh, i uh, see but 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 my EPs or albums are mostly like um yeah they take like a month to make I don't know and I work re- really really much. Well, that's a that's a lot of time. So I think like the amount of effort and energy you put into this, um, that's a lot, and um, I want to appreciate you for that. That's Thank amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So let's let's go back to history. I love mm-hmm. history. Yeah, um, me too. <laughs> when do you start to produce? Like. When was the moment that you decided, like, yes, I want to produce music. I want to make music. Like, when was yeah. that? And, and how did, how was the story? That's a really good question. Um, I remember listening to a lot of um, house productions back, like, four years ago. Um, and one day I, I, I figured out, like, these people can do it. Why, why can't I produce music? Mm. Uh, so I just like I remember sitting in my kitchen with like uh, my mom's computer I think and I and I downloaded um, uh, FL Studio for the loops. Ah uh, yeah. Um and I just like sat there watching YouTube tutorials, trying to figure out how 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 this stuff works because uh, yeah it's it's it it was um. I I thought it was really fun, but at the same time very uh, learning based on the YouTube videos. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to produce music. Like yeah, maybe like yeah, I would say for four years ago when I four sat there ago. in my yeah when I sat there at the kitchen table with my mom's computer. <laughs> That's awesome. So you started four years ago. That's the moment when you discover like oh there's this thing and i can really learn it through tutorials and 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 that's how you come to produce is that right yes exactly so um like uh, do you have any background in like uh music education or something like that or do you learn it all well, I, by yourself I, um i'm self taught in uh fruit fruit fruity loops and uh, uh sp404 which i use as well but um, uh, uh, I've been drumming since like 2012, so uh, I I know I know I know my way of like getting the drums to fit in, if you know what I mean. Mm, yeah. Uh, oh, so you play drums. Yes, exactly. And do you have any other instruments that you also play? Like um... no, I I I know like I, I can play some piano, but not much actually. I'm, I'm ah, yeah. just uh just the drums. Yeah, I see. I see. So um, yeah. Uh, last time I saw like uh there was uh, a few people. There were a few a few people that uh, um most of them actually are um uh, learning everything by their own. But mm-hmm. some actually took programs to uh, learn and how they got interested into making music. But I oh. think like every every person has a different story, yeah. and it's interesting to see how they started and how mm-hmm. they got uh, here. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. years of of making music and practicing and just producing and producing. So mm-hmm. it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, 
let's talk about like the lo-fi genre. I think mm-hmm. like because I'm a lo-fi, uh, I'm very very familiar with the lo-fi community. Like, yeah. any thoughts on the current lo-fi genre? Like, the condition or like the audience? Like, what do you think of lo-fi? Lo-fi yeah. for me, I I discovered lo-fi uh, through you know Tampa beats. Mm, yeah. Uh, um, I remember listening to it, and I was like, "Yo, this stuff like it makes me feel really nostalgic for some reason." Yeah. I don't know. It was just the uh, the sound and the, the and the samples. Oh, I remember when I first like heard it i was like jesus christ this is so good and yeah and i i mean i'm not too familiar with like a lot of art uh, underground lo-fi artists i'm more more familiar with you know the bigger ones like jin sang and um sleep dealer the big Tampa. one yeah exactly um uh, so I, i'm not too familiar with the community i think it's a great community otherwise I would say like people share their loops and their their beats and I I love seeing so so many people like want to achieve something with their music like maybe growing an an audience or maybe just like doing it for fun and that that's what I like about the lo-fi community what I know of is um people are people are people really don't care about the fame it's more yeah. like it's more like um they do it for for for, for the people yeah i found it really interesting because um uh, everyone has different like agenda i guess um on why they want to produce but mm-hmm. one thing that i i find really interesting about the low vibe community is the fact that like literally everyone is supportive in the yeah. way like the audience uh, giving feedbacks and also for the producers, you know, helping other producers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so it's, it's really amazing to see, like even the underground artists that I, that I found was really super, super supportive uh, with other artists as well, giving feedbacks and, and, and some encouragements to produce. And, and I found it really amazing. Uh, to see and it's really really it, it really motivates me to curate Lovi as well which is why I'm just I'm so in love with this uh, community mm-hmm. especially you of course <laughs> oh, thank you. right but um it's it's been really um a controversy I'm not I don't, I'm not sure if it's a controversy but everyone has their own different discipline yeah. and work life balance and it's always it's always it always becomes a dilemma for people to uh, balance whether they should produce music or spend time with the people that they love yeah. or working to pay their bills you know doing just part-time jobs etc etc but for you like um, how how do you define the work-life balance like mm. how do you balance personally That's- for you that's a really good question um like if i feel stressed to make music if i like oh i have to make this uh, beat for my next tape Mm. i'm gonna hang out with friends instead because i don't want to feel pressured making Mm. beats so i i I divide like music and family what uh, based on how i feel at the moment so I don't have like a, a specific schedule, if you know what I mean. I just I just do what I think I want to do at the moment because I think your 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 personal feelings um, is the most important thing in you know yeah. uh, di- uh, dividing work from family and friends. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I I always like. I divide it from how I feel at the moment. So, like, uh, yeah, that's that's really interesting. But uh, you don't have like uh any target, like um, like I want to make a beat every week, or do you just let it flow? I just let it flow. I think that's uh, mo- the most healthy, uh, mm-hmm. healthy um 
weight to creating music. So mm-hmm. I don't, I, I usually don't have targets, no. Maybe sometimes I'm, I, I, I may be like, if I start a beat and I think, oh, this is good, I want to com- finish it today, then I'll probably mm-hmm. do it. But not, not like, oh, I got to produce at least three beats this week, three beats next week. Yeah, because like I found that some producers, like they have this really strict set of discipline. Like yeah. they need to produce uh, a beat a day or maybe like uh, one beat a week. And and yeah. sometimes the pressure really like destroys themselves in the inside. But yeah. some people actually um, are helped with that discipline. They, they grow. So I feel like uh, it's very contextual in a way that everyone has different uh, preferences. But I think mental health and, and just being healthy mentally, physically, and emotionally is very important, especially for any type of creatives, whether it being artists, uh, producers, singers, um, writers, I think to not being pressured to finish a certain, in a certain de- deadline, I think that's just really healthy. So it's, it's really interesting when we talk about work-life balance. Now, um, let's talk about collaboration. Yes. Do you have any plans to collaborate with other artists or producers out there? Um, I I have some plans actually, not not like strictly finished plans, but um, I, I do have one one of uh, the more underground artists called the Forfashire. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm planning to do some collaborations with him, and basically, Chris Carl. I don't know. I don't. I'm not the one. I don't want to um, ask people for collaborations. I want them to feel like, oh, he, he he's a. Uh, he, I want to collaborate with him instead of me, saying, oh, I I ah. need to collaborate with him. It's it's hard to explain, but um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, but so so are you like the guy who's like, I'm okay with. Uh, collaborate with others but like I'm cool also like just doing it alone like unless someone reach out to you and like hey man hey Chris do you want to collaborate then you're like oh yeah that sounds cool like are you that type of guy yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah I totally get that so um, um, let's talk about the future now Um, Mm -hmm. you've been producing for at least like the last four years and yes, exactly. that's a long journey, actually. Four years is, is a long time. But mm-hmm. how do you see yourself like in the future? Like, do you have any uh, sort of like plans? Like, uh, I want to be like this kind of person in the next five years, or at least maybe not just pressuring yourself, but like, do you have any like achievement that you wish uh, could happen in the next like five years or so? I'm not too sure. Uh, I, 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 Sometimes I think myself like in four years sitting in some basement with my SP404 and some friends just creating beats, smoking and, you know, having a great time. <laughs> but uh, as well as I, I really, I would think I, I would like to maybe play some live shows. I don't mm. know, like just play some chill beats for people. I'm not really like the type of guy that looks like that, that has plans for the future. I just, uh, I just let it go with the flow. <laughs> uh, like in Sweden, like, do you have a lot of live performance with uh, like uh, producers or like artists in the bar or like in restaurants? Did that happen? Uh, in- yeah, it happens sometimes. Not, not usually the producers, I would say. If so, oh, yeah. more like live jazz bands and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, I, I've actually reached out to um, one of the ca- cafes here in Stockholm, and I they have like this stage, um, which I want to set up a li- live set for. So I'm extremely uh, hyped for that one. Yeah, it's really cool if if you know it, it could happen, and maybe you get a lot of exposure from. Um, doing live performances and people can uh, get to know a lot of your beats. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really interesting. Before we are ending it, uh, do you have any advice for people 
who has just started to produce music like do you have any tips for them make work 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 as you want to just don't listen to other people's like maybe a critique and feedback can be useful sometimes but mostly just if you think it's good then it's good then it's fine <laughs> just do your do your thing <laughs> That is awesome, man. Uh, do you have any like shout out you want to do last messages before we ending it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to um, Hannes Stensal, which is my uh, uh, partner in Crisp Carl. <laughs> we produce together, and yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Chris, for your time. Thank you for uh, letting me on the show. And of course, thank you so much for you all who have been listening to the podcast up until this point. This has been Chris Carl. And we're going to play one of your music after this. So thank you guys, everyone, for watching. Um, don't forget to spread positivity. Don't forget to smile. Don't have, forget to have a good day and spread positivity everywhere you go. See you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.